What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. Who is more likely to make a title run this year, the Golden State Warriors or the Los Angeles Lakers? Let's start with you, Logan. I'm still leaning on the side of the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, despite uh, these teams kind of going in inverse directions recently. The Warriors trending upwards, Lakers uh, trending downwards with, I don't know, whatever lineup concoction Darvin Ham <laughs> whips up for the night, man. Uh, it's probably better to answer this post-trade deadline, not to plead the fifth on you guys. I do think both of these teams are prone <laughs> to make a move, and I think, <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think that is going to terminate. it. Uh, but I do believe in the Lakers more. A lot of this has to do with their top two stars. I just believe in LeBron and AD a little more than the Warriors' top two guys. Uh, LeBron, 25, 8, and 7, still is probably one of the handful of guys, 5 to 10. Uh, you know, uh, we exclude Steph Curry and LeBron James from this conversation. Uh, for our last thought exercise, LeBron and Steph are definitely on my short list of guys in that conversation. But I think the Lakers title hopes are going to come down to a few things. Again, the move they make at the deadline, the performance of their top two guys, the consistent, reliable night to night effort and how Darvin Ham utilizes this lineup. Ironically, I think Darvin Ham and how he utilizes this lineup is going to be one of the bigger um, swing factors. I don't know yeah. the, the bigger. Yeah. The bigger yeah. swing factors here. You're exactly right. Like, I don't know if a playoff series, if Austin Reeves has a bad game and then he sits him on the bench and, I don't know. Darvin Ham really makes me question what he's thinking sometimes when he trots out these lineups. It really makes me scratch my head. And then, you know, the Warriors, I think they could make a hypothetical title run too. Again, it's going to come down to them making a move at the deadline, whatever that is. Uh, as Carson has harped on in our show throughout this season, this is the uh, best bench of the Stephen Curry era. It is phenomenal. B-Pod, TJD, uh, Moody, Kaminga, the performance of, the, uh, of those guys. But Golden State is still undersized, and they have physical disadvantages. And I think barring an offensive showcase from Golden State, what I mean by that in the playoffs, Steph on fire, Clay not missing anything, Andrew Wiggins dominating attacking closeouts, making every shot, the bench playing their asses off. Barring that, I just think that they fall to the Nuggets, to the Timberwolves, to the Lakers, I just don't think that they can overcome the the physical disadvantages they have with those teams. So we're going to have to wait and see with the trade deadline, but I, it's going to take a lot for me to catapult the Warriors over the Lakers, uh, even though these teams have been trending in different directions. Yeah, I view these teams honestly in different tiers when we're talking about what can they be as contenders. I have had a ton of fun watching the Warriors as of late. Hodds is awesome. I think he's such a good fit. I just think he makes so many impact plays, so good at the little things, just a nose for the ball, all-around awesome rookie. I've been super happy to see TJD getting more minutes. I thought he was maybe the best value pick in the draft, and he has lived up to that hype. Kaminga coming into his own, really making the most of his athletic advantages. Like That stuff is all really fun. But it is kind of what we were talking about with the Thunder. Like, you don't want to be leaning on a bunch of young guys if you're trying to contend. And sure, Draymond will get back, and maybe Andrew Wiggins becomes 2022 Andrew Wiggins again. I don't know. He's been trending upwards, but not from a very good place whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I just think the biggest key factor is exactly what you laid out, Logan. It is the two elite superstar level basketball players. And that's the one thing when we had our son's conversation that I don't want to overly diminish. Like, I think that's a crazy mm -hmm. flawed basketball team. Really, really flawed. But having Devin Booker and Kevin Durant is terrifying. That yeah. got them two wins against the Denver <laughs> Nuggets when they had an inferior mm -hmm. supporting cast because there were two games where they were just like, hey, is it cool if we combine for 80 points per game and are playmaking <laughs> at a high level and making 70% of our pull -up pull -up jumpers? Yeah, like that can happen at any time. That is terrifying. And with LeBron and AD it's a little bit different because AD can just dominate defensively and LeBron can physically impose himself offensively in a way that I think is even a little bit more complimentary, whereas Book and KD are going to excel at a lot of similar things. And we've just seen how far those two can get you with solid role players. They got you to a title. We've seen what that looked like in a high stakes setting this year. They were amazing in the play-in tournament. That to me just legitimizes them 
on a different level than the Warriors, even though they are playing much better as of late. The elite size thing is very real. That was a big difference maker in the matchup between these two teams last year. They have a big advantage there. They match up better against the other contenders, as we've talked about. That's important this year. And I think it's important that they have a side of the ball where they clearly excel. Like, this is the case for the Timberwolves as well. They're a dominant defense, and no, they're not a great half-court offense. They don't have overwhelming offensive skill. They don't have, like, that tier one offensive creator. And that does worry me when you're talking about winning a title, but they are really physical. They grind it out. They have a couple of really good shot creators. And then when you pair that with an elite, elite defense, that makes you hard to beat. I absolutely think that the engaged Lakers will dominate defensively, and then they can lean on their stars, especially one guy named LeBron James for clutch offense. And when AD is aggressive there, when Austin Reeves is playing well, that's still a pretty good formula. So I love the Warriors depth, but to me, until they make a move, if it is getting Lowry Markin and like to me, it has to be a guy who's going to bring real size in the front court and real offensive pop. He's my favorite just because he's such an awesome fit in their system. I think he's a better basketball player than a guy like Siakam and he's an awesome value contract like that could take them up a tier. But right now I view them more as like a really tough first round matchup who can maybe win a series. They've got a bunch of scrappy dudes who are playing hard and then they have Steph Curry. That is always going to make them a team that has some upside but they're too limited right now i see a clearer path for the lakers yeah i think i think the obvious answer to this question is the lakers based on the current iterations of them and it really mm -hmm. is this simple to me like the lakers have had the largest gap in my opinion between their actual playoff potential and their regular season mm -hmm. production i think they yeah. leave a lot of meat on the bone every single night not just not just in terms of effort. And some potatoes. And yeah. some potatoes, man. <laughs> Not just in terms of effort, but also in terms of the rotation, as as Logan was hinting yeah. at. Like, this starting lineup that they're running out there is legitimately one of the most bizarre lineup constructions I've ever seen. Because it's like, it literally, you would, you would think it was the Lakers from a year and a half ago when they had no good players and they were trying to figure out how to put out there. But it's like, no, they're yeah. just straight up putting two or three of their top five players on the bench to start games just for mm -hmm. poops and giggles. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like... The, uh, the Lakers are actually, th this is one of the biggest reasons why I'm still pretty high on them, despite the lineup imbalances and the poor use of resources and the inconsistent effort. They are 12th and half court offense this year <laughs> and an yeah. eighth and half court defense. And like, I still feel like they're slow down bully ball attack on both ends of the floor is a really, really scary prospect for a lot of teams in the league. It's pretty much everybody but Denver, in my opinion, in the West, and then everybody but Boston in the East. Uh, uh, that said, like there's a lot that they have to get to, to, to solve to get to that point. The Warriors are 16th and half-court offense and 20th and half-court defense. And then to put it simply, the Lakers have two guys playing at a superstar level and the, and the Warriors have one. And yeah. like last year, you could make the case that LeBron was playing at something other than a superstar level, especially in the postseason when he was injured. But this year, he's literally like he's having one of the most efficient scoring seasons of his career. His jump shot is at, a, at a, is is consistently uh, being made at a higher level. He's basically one point one points per shot, which is like twenty percent higher than it was last year. Anthony Davis has started taking and making jump shots more frequently now. He's having by far the best post-up season of his career, and I feel like he could even go up a level because he's still missing so many bunnies around the rim. Like I think the Lakers are clearly better positioned. That said, mm -hmm. the uh, both of these teams, in my opinion, have to hit their midseason mm -hmm. trade. Yeah. Uh, we, could, we, we won't do it today, but we could argue about which type of player the Warriors get. But if they make a move and they upgrade uh, the, that four spot, into some sort of star level player, you guys can like referring to the fans of the league, feel free to write them off if you want. I feel like that's a really bad idea when you've got Steph yeah. Curry and Draymond Green and Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins on that team. One thing to keep an eye on with the Warriors that I think could work to their detriment in terms of con uh, contending this year is Kaminga's hooping his ass off. And there's a version of this where they're like, we don't want to trade Kaminga because mm -hmm. he's going to be too good. And I think that would be a gigantic mistake simply from the standpoint of like, if you think Kaminga's the guy, get rid of Steph because you're not winning the title this year with this roster. And yeah. so if your goal is to develop Kaminga for the future, Steph's 35. He's got two or three years left of being one of the top six or seven players in the league. So like, 
you either, uh, I would guarantee that Steph doesn't want to be a part of a team that's more interested in developing a young prospect for the future than to, uh, than to com- contend for a championship. And so mm-hmm. one of the things that works for the Lakers benefit is like, you bet your ass they're going to make a trade and they're going to do something to yeah. to try to upgrade this roster because they sense the urgency. And I, I think there actually is some conflict within the Warriors organization about which direction to go, which could be something that kind of holds them, uh, uh, makes them a little bit more reticent to make a move. And for the record, like Jonathan Kaminga is going to be really good. Yeah. Uh, my question would be like, you better be damn sure he's going to be a superstar if you're going to uh, to 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 not go after it with this group and and like again and when you uh, one of the biggest issues for in my opinion with the warriors is that as andrew wiggins has declined the slotting of the team has gotten all screwed up and now everybody's trying to to, to fill a role that's above their pay grade mm-hmm. and so literally if andrew wiggins isn't going to get it together and become that guy again if you can bring that guy in and then start to properly slot guys again I think it could. I, I think they can still be a really dangerous team. Again, they have one of the best home court advantages in basketball. Steph Curry is. Mm-hmm. If we're ranking just purely playoff players, Steph is firmly in that top five still, in my opinion. I, I thought oh, yeah. his. I thought he was completely unguardable last year. It's like the the Lakers won, but they never really figured out the Steph Curry problem. Mm-hmm. You know, so like it it. It like they're again, both of these teams I still think are within striking distance pending a trade, but I think as currently constructed, the Lakers are very clearly the the better basketball team. <laughs> 